Duck hunters love to tell stories about hitting the migration just right and limiting out. However, that's not always reality. Duck hunting is hard work, and the untold story is one of missed shots, of a broken gear, <laughs> and hopefully a few laughs. But if you put in the time and play your cards right, Pintails. a northerly wind might bring some birds your way. Never works out how you want it to. I'm Sean Weaver, a former hunting guide, TV producer, and a guy who's just obsessed with waterfowl hunting. But limits of birds aren't what keep duck hunting alive, and that's what I want to talk about. This is Duck Lore. Everyone knows about the deer, wild hog, and high fence exotic hunting found in Texas. But the Lone Star State doesn't get the respect it deserves for ducks. Despite Texas being 96% private land, its coastal marsh habitat is largely public and plays an essential role in overwintering a number of North America's waterfowl species. Among those are spectacular amounts of blue-winged teal. I'm down here for the opening day of Texas's teal-only season, joined by Chef Jean-Paul Bourgeois to see if we can't get some of these tasty morsels while shaking off the cobwebs before the regular duck season begins a few weeks from now. You gassed up in this rig? Opening weekend shenanigans, right? Don't even know if there's gas in the boat. <laughs> I go. can legitimately say I have no clue if there's gas in this boat. <laughs> this is exciting. This is the way I like to hunt. We'll be siphoning gas out of your uh, out of your truck. We legitimately might be. I had guns, decoys, all that figured out, but I forgot to think about gas. Better today than tomorrow when we actually count mm -hmm. to go shoot mm -hmm. birds. I'm gonna try to shake the boat and see if we can hear sloshing. I hear a little bit. You heard that? Yeah. There's a lot of slot. There's a lot of slosh. That sounds like enough gas to me. <laughs> it's definitely got liquid in there. We got gas. We got enough anyway. This coastal marshland is a series of tidal estuaries and ponds, mostly connected by one central channel. We're looking for two things, flocks of teal buzzing along the horizon and shallow flooded vegetation that looks like blue wing habitat. So far, I've only e-scouted this area, so it's important Jean-Paul and I get some boots on the marsh. Those are absolutely what I was hoping to find. There's a bend here that it looks tight. I need to get down to this one. Once you're out of the main channel, this area is a veritable maze of grasses, sedges, and rushes that provide both protective cover and seeds that serve as a food source for waterfowl. In this area, tides are also a serious concern. Not only will they dictate where we can go, but how and when we get there. High is 9 a.m. So when we need to come in here, it's gonna be pretty low. So it's gonna be hard coming in, easy leaving. Yeah. I think this might be our best bet. If we can get the boat as far as we just did. Three of them going down right here. They look like bigger ducks, but just knowing that there's waterfowl in the area, teal behind you. Oh, we got three other ducks right here. Mallards. All right, wildlife. We gotta be at the ramp by. So early. I don't wanna know how early. <laughs> The latest by five, right? Yeah, yeah, by the latest, because that's a long drive back here. We're definitely going to have competition tomorrow. That is to say, as long as we can make it back to It doesn't feel like much gas, I'm guessing. No, it doesn't feel like much gas at all, but I can hear it sloshing around the bottom. So there's still some. Some. But enough to get back to the boat ramp, probably, if we're lucky. Let's stay positive. Lucky for us, we make it back, and we've got a good spot for opening day. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, and the one on the other side. It's kind of like the opening morning uh, jitters, you know? A lot of them out there, especially on my part. Oh, hold on, hold on. I need the boat key off the dash. This morning, we're on the marsh pretty darn early. First and foremost, because it's opening day and there's gonna be no shortage of other hunters. No, why? But more importantly, teal are notoriously first light flyers that are most active at twilight. Thank you. Knowing that first hour will be the bulk of the flight, we want to give ourselves plenty of room for other complications. It's hot. Most of the time I'm worrying about being cold when I'm hunting. Not this, today. This is not one of those cases. This is not one of those. One of the best parts of early season teal hunting is that you don't necessarily need a large decoy spread to bring them in. They do, on the other hand, love motion, so a spinning wing decoy can be a great advantage. We're legal, Beagle. We are legal. It is 635. <laughs> that guy's not far at all. Ooh, I think I shot your, uh, I think I shot your, uh, mojo, man, possibly. <laughs> That's all right. We got a duck. <laughs> First teal of the trip. Yes, dude. That was nice. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Good, huh? good spot on that. I was watching that shorebird. <laughs> Didn't see the teal sneak right in. First Texas blooming, man. Feels good. Watch behind good. us. Starting to see some in the air now. Four coming from your side, then one around our back. Hey, hey, hey. Right here. Sucker busted us. One on the left. Mm, mm. Shit. The buses. There's one in the water. Nice shot. Thank you. Dumped in from behind us, huh? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't care about the wind. Look at that beautiful, nice look at that too. wing on him, man. That's a beautiful. It's, oh. it's funny how, even though we're hunting, it still doesn't feel like real duck season. <laughs> you know, you're playing this game of like, oh, are they teal or are they not? Versus just like trying to kill ducks. Yeah. And yeah. Come on. Come back around here. Shoot. Damn, dude, you're a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it a little bit. Dude. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm walking straight to that one. Where'd they come from? I don't know, but that was real fast. And that's the thing about hunting in this, hunting in this habitat. If they're not in open water, you don't have a dog. It's hard to find these birds, especially as small as they are. They'll bury themselves in the grass if they got a little bit of life in them. They just duck down, hunker down, and unless you step on them, or they're dead as a doornail laying on top, then 
that's tough. I mean, he's right on. I mean, Sean's the kind of guy that's going to eat him up inside if he cannot find that bird because he knows he's dead. Man, that duck has got to be right here. So? That's just a... It's a thick mess, huh? It's a bad shot on my part. I know that bird's going to be hard to find. I should just let it go, you know? But it's first hunt of the year and you get greedy and then you end up shooting a bird that you shouldn't have shot at. But count it against your limit and be better about it next time. Oh, Spoonzilla. It's a Spoonbill Maxwell. Let him come in. Oh. <laughs> Big ol' schnoz. <laughs> Shovelers are real bad to see during teal season because they even have the blue wing patch. <laughs> They've got everything that's a blue wing. At least they're a little yeah. bigger and a bigger nose. Yeah. I that one. I hit that one, bro. That's his teal. Lovely. Oh. So they may feed for longer today because they didn't they didn't probably didn't get a lot of light to feed yesterday. Last night. And you know, are these early season teal, they could be migrating in, they could be flying late because of that. You just never know. Got him. Yeah. There we go. Good job. This turned into a pretty good little hunt. Yeah, man. Totally worth the scouting, the sweating in the morning, the early wake up call. Absolutely. I think we're just I think we're just chiseling away at them right now. I mean, they're flying. We're having a better hunt than I would thought we would have had half an hour ago. The bag limit on teal here in the early season is six ducks. Once I reach my six, counting the earlier lost bird against my limit, I unload and do some calling for Jean-Paul. Contrary to a lot of waterfowl hunters' practices, party hunting isn't allowed and you can't share bag limits. Oh boy, don't scare him all the way. I'm flying a little straight, huh? That's the difference between being a local and being out of towner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We picked a spot to shoot ducks and we shot some ducks, but they're yep. pounding them. They're on the X. Yeah. We're they're close on. to the X. Yep. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty proud of us for showing up to a place we've never been and finding some ducks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I am, I'm thoroughly impressed, to be honest with you. I mean, you spent a lot of time on your phone scouting, right? Yeah. And then we get out to a place that neither of us have ever been. Never more, seen. Never, never seen in real life. On. And go ahead and shoot ducks, which I think is just a testament to how much scouting helps. Especially, oh, I mean, yeah. You know, if you, can, if you can shoot ducks as a somebody coming in from out of town here, then people that live here can come on this refuge and really Definitely. do well. Yep. Hunting day after day, understanding the flight patterns and so on. I can't turn. Yum. Oh, he's going. Oh, man. Oh, he's not going down. <laughs> they were almost too close, John Paul. That, that's like one of those times where you're like, man, you should just pack it up right there. <laughs> You know that teal are actually like one of the slowest ducks. I mean, those four don't show that they're one of the slowest ducks, but they're one of the slowest. They just yeah. only go fast though. Like they only do everything at 100%. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. 
I'm telling you, I'm shooting blanks here. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> it's all right. He was probably too close. You're shooting a golf ball at him again. Dude, I had my bead on his beak. That was my redemption, you know? That was kind of like a redemption little Oh, gift. hey, right here. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. See, that's... Those four? <laughs> four or five. I can <laughs> live with that. That thing, I can't live with. You <laughs> can't. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Please don't make this into the, the final cut. <laughs> oh, that's great. It wouldn't be teal hunting if there wasn't a bunch of missing going well, on. Well, I'm the guy that's going to miss in this blind, so. <laughs> As the action slows, Jean-Paul and I pack up the spread, making plans to return here tomorrow. Rarely will you ever do as well in the same spot as you've done the day before. However, it seems like there's still a fair number of birds around, so we decide to give it one more day, rather than trying to scout a whole new setup. Not to mention, we've got some bird supply, thankfully. I think this is one of my favorite ways to clean teal birds. You know, not, maybe if you're not gonna keep the legs and thighs, but definitely pluck the breasts if you're gonna breast them. Yeah. And, you know, they still have a lot of pin feathers this time of year, but these ones are pulling pretty easy. I mean, that's a pretty clean yeah. breast. Yeah, no, it looks great. But do they fare, fare a little better during the summer months in their, in their breeding habitats because they're so used to warmer weather and they like the warmer weather? Yeah, like, blueing populations have like been trending higher, generally speaking, compared to most ducks who've kind of been trending lower. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they've been doing good. There is not a pin feather on that. Man, that yeah. is like a late season yeah. duck in September. That's what you would hope a pintail or mallard would look like in December. Man, I'm just really glad we got on a few birds today because the forecast is pretty sketchy over the next couple days and it can go either way. Yeah, we both check the weather and see the same thing of watching tropical disturbance in the Gulf and it's like, great. Yeah. That's exactly what we need. We can deal with the wind and the clouds and the sure. you know, storm coming in. It's the, what are we gonna do if we get six inches of rain while we're out there? That old phrase about the calm before the storm, well, it's all too true. After getting our butts kicked the second morning, we grill up some teal from our first hunt for lunch, start making an alternative game plan, and call up my buddy Kevin Deal to see if he can swing one morning with us. Kevin works for a lodge called Run and Gun, an operation that specifically manages land for early season teal hunting. With the tropical storm bearing down, we only have one day left, and we need to make it count. Hey buddy! What's going on? How's it going? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. This is Jean Paul. What's up, Kevin? Kevin Deal. Nice to meet you, nice man. Nice to meet you. How's How it going? Doing? Yeah, we're gonna go look at some uh, some rice holes and some wood and grass holes and go see what we got. How many teal been hanging around? Good, Quite a few. Good yeah, flocks. Per, yeah, pretty good amount. Uh, we've hit limits opening weekend so far. There've been a lot hanging around. Sweet. So we're I'm excited. Uh, the property we're going to, they've got a lot hanging around it as well. So I'm yeah, excited we, to we see how you guys things. manage this stuff. Blue wings tend to cluster in flooded fields where waste grain, weeds, seeds, and insects offer them a variety of food sources. And hunting operations like this one spend an incredible amount of time monitoring and rotating these food sources. But that doesn't mean we don't need to scout. After all, these are wild birds with wild habits. For the best chance at success, we have to dial in the bird's pattern and location. So we head out with Kevin to take a look at some of the potential spots for tomorrow. These fields are harvested, then flooded, and have a deliberate crop rotation schedule that benefits both the farmers and the ducks. So when you're scouting these rice holes, what are you typically looking for as far as like morning, afternoon flight activity? 
Typically they're gonna come into the rice first thing in the morning and then they're gonna get off it and go to, go to some loaf ponds. But what we have here, we got about 60 acres. This is all flooded. Uh, so this is our, our open hole that's down here on the southeast side. But uh, the ducks are over on some loaf ponds that we're gonna go look at here in a little bit. So they're not using this in the afternoon, really? They, they use Not it really, as a they, they will a little bit, but it's mostly gonna be a, a morning feed. And yep. you know, they'll, uh, and some of the birds that we'll, we'll kill tomorrow, you'll feel their, their throats are gonna just be full of, full of uh, rice. Every couple of years, we'll we'll have more rice than we did, you know, the year before. Yep. Um, it always excites us as as duck hunters and, and as guides, because, you know, like we say down here, rice is king. While that might be the case, the storm is picking up momentum, so anything could happen. Ready to do this? Let's go get them. Kevin and his outfit use custom designed metal stakes to hold palmettos for blinds. Yeah a tactic similar to the willow blinds you find hunters use in Canada. It's quick to set up, mobile, and customizable depending on how many people you need to put in the blind. A couple small gaps, but yeah. you feel that. Two minutes. We even have enough time to take a breather before shooting light. The first light flight delayed by the heavy cloud cover. Out front. Kill it. Kill it. Nice shot. Kill him. <clears throat> nice go. shot. One more time. Yeah. Watch the decoy. I got a clean shot. You get it. Right, they're top left, top left. John Paul, keep an eye out front for me. Yes, sir. See, a lot of times when you get a group that comes and does that, <clears throat> you know, you'll spin around and go look at them, mm -hmm. and you'll get another group that comes in here. Kill him up front. Two of them. Kind of snuck in all over the trees there. Mm -hmm. The thing that saves teal a lot of times is, you know, they're within shooting range at first pass, but yep. they're going too. They're going too fast. <laughs> well, and you know they're going to spin. Yeah, that's the thing. You know they're going to spin. Especially, you know, it's, it's all about re reading that flock of ducks. Yeah. So they were wanting in here, but they even knew that they were they were coming too fast. So, mm. you know, a lot of I think it's what a lot of hunters make the mistake of is shooting them that very first time they come swing through, mm -hmm. and not let those ducks come back through. Here we got a drake and a hen. Like I was talking about, you don't have the, the plumage colors like we get in the winter time. Mm -hmm. You got the dark orange feet on the drake, more drab uh, feet on the hen. The wing difference. Wing is really difference is a real big indicator too. You don't have as a pronounced as a white patch. And this one's a little shot up, but you know the drakes have a very pronounced white patch through there. Interesting. Their hands are going to be more speckled. Yep. And then if you're looking at the bill, Drake is over here on your left. He's all black, all and then black. the hand is going to have the kind of gray with the splotchy on the yep. side. Very hard to tell that. Almost impossible while they're flying, but yeah. once you're once you're coming in, or once you get them in, you know you can tell the differences. But they get much much prettier here in, in December. Don't exactly love that storm coming roll, rolling over the trees like a little, that. A little sketchy. A little sketchy. It's that's a little sure. intense. Yeah. And only halfway into the hunt, the outer bands of Hurricane Nicholas start to make landfall. Light to moderate rain, they said, huh? Yeah. Coming in hot. Kill him. 
Coming across you, JP. God, dog. Ah. That should have been a three pack. <laughs> they caught us a little off guard. Well, not to rub anyone's face in it, but I at least got one there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to. Kill it. Ooh. Come on. Oh, no. Look at the feathers only floating. Had, only had one shot. <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> He's got to save his energy for napping later on. <laughs> hey, uh, get in, get in. Got a group over the trees. Y'all see him? Yep. Here we go. Yep. Kill him. Come on. There it is. Just had to sit through some rain to see the perfect spot. Here. I know it's a hurricane, but I just love hunting in this type of weather. Like, really gives that, I don't know, nostalgic duck hunt, you know what I mean? Like yeah. all those duck hunters are kind of known for. Yeah. Right? Hunting a little nasty, a little gritty, a little wet. Yeah. Not too cold yet, but that's coming. Got plenty of time for that, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the it's like the duck hunter's duck hunt huh, is to be soaked and miserable, but also <laughs> enjoying themselves. Oh yeah, here they come. Here we go. One o'clock. Yep. Come right on. Get ready. Make them pay strong. Oh, one more time. Coming oh, back. Okay. Swing it back. There. Yeah. Swing it back. Come right back over my yep, right shoulder. I got you. They're coming. Here we go. Yep. Kill him. Ooh, he's down. That was good. This is out like front, out front. Get in, get in, get in. Shoot him. God, dog it. Couldn't go ending the trip on good shooting. I was just giving a morning shot. <laughs> that's, all, that's all right. Well, I think it's time to call it. Yeah, the storm's uh, approaching on us. We get, gave us a little bit of a break and get some birds moving in here. Got some good shooting in. Man, we'll that was that was like the end cap. That was what we needed, you know? Yeah. I felt good to get those last couple of volleys. Oh, in. yeah. Come in, they did it perfectly, too. Got a good little pile of birds. A few yeah, rice-fed teal to go yeah, home with. Definitely enough for some dinner. Normally, I tend to think of teal season as a bit of an appetizer, a practice run before the real deal comes along in October and November. It's comparable to a preseason football scrimmage with the pads on. But with a hurricane rolling in and a handful of tasty blue wings to bring home, it finally feels like duck season. 